Hello, I'm Corey Dockendorf, and I'm a support engineer here at the Microsoft Private Cloud and Rackspace. Today we're going to do a short video to explain how to set up VMs within your new environment and make them highly available. Today I'm joined by Jake, who will be assisting us with that process. Thanks, Corey. Hi, I'm Jake. I'm the product engineer for Microsoft Private Cloud here at Rackspace. Thanks for uh, being on. Uh, so I hear congratulations are in order because now our Microsoft Private Cloud offering is being powered by Server 2016? That's correct. So our, our Hyper-V 2016 offering is uh, pretty awesome. It has a lot of new features and a lot of new capabilities. Now, one of the new features I understand is that it'll be utilizing Server Core. That's correct. So Server Core was kind of a no-brainer for the Hyper-V role. It has a drastically reduced attack surface with all that GUI element stripped out. Additionally, a drastically reduced uh, patching requirement. And you also get a lot of improved performance on the Hyper-V server itself. So Core was the right decision uh, moving forward for all of our Hyper-V servers. Excellent. And if I want to access the hypervisor in Server Core, how would I do that? So your primary interaction tool for Server Core is going to be PowerShell. There's a lot of great stuff on TechNet and as well as in the Hyper-V community itself. Uh, a lot of scripting techniques that you can use to interact and spin up, spin down VMs. And also, if you need any help with that, uh, Corey is here to provide all the PowerShell examples you want for interacting with Server Core. And I'll be happy to help you with that as well. Now, I understand if I'm not a big scripter and I don't do a lot of PowerShell, how would I be able to access my hypervisors? Sure. So all of our Microsoft Private Cloud deployments here at Rackspace have the management VM, which contains all the remote uh, server administration tools that you're probably used to. That'll have all of your virtualization manager GUI, your failover cluster, and all those tools that you're used to using on a day-in, day-out basis. So we deploy that uh, as a VM that's running inside of your hypervisor environment uh, for all of our deployments. So now as a management VM, I'm assuming that's going to be utilizing some sort of resource. Yeah, but very minimal. So you're going to have that management VM is going to be using two vCPUs, two gigs of RAM, and just a couple of gigs of hard drive space. So minimal impact, and you get the full benefit of that full GUI environment you're probably used to. Excellent. So uh, let's take a look. Sure. I've got one spun up right here. So if we take a look at the server core environment itself, you obviously have the ability to engage PowerShell and use things like new VM to make uh, an infinite number of virtual machines so as you see fit. Again, Corey is here to uh, take any of your calls around that and will help you with uh, guiding you through PowerShell and making that a success. But if you're not comfortable in the command line and not sure how to engage PowerShell on an ongoing basis, you do have the management VM which is gonna be running on your hypervisor. So you'll notice that if we log into the hypervisor, that you get the same uh, GUI elements that you're used to with the Hyper-V uh, Virtualization Manager. So you can access this and see your hypervisor. And from here, we can start the process of building a new VM and things of that nature. We also have the Failover Cluster Manager, which is gonna allow you to manage all of your highly available VMs, interact with your hypervisor cluster if you have one of those. So you'll notice uh, one of the first things I wanna draw your attention to is that Rackspace is going to provide you uh, with the base images for all your VMs. So all I've done here is I've just uh, kind of whack whacked to this uh, hypervisor name and the C drive for that hypervisor. And under that, you'll see the VM base images folder and Rackspace provides you through uh, DFSR replication, all of the images for all the various VM OSs that we support. So you get things like 2012 R2, 2016, CentOS, whatever Linux flavor that you're interested in. Uh, we've set you up for success and you have those base images that you are ready and uh, ready to go. So you just simply take one of these. So if we're interested in building a 2016 VM, uh, I would just initiate a copy. And since we're gonna be making this an HA VM uh, here shortly, I need to make sure that goes over into my cluster storage. So we'll be making a copy every time we make a VM. Well, we'll get a little bit into that. Uh, not necessarily for every VM. Um, depends on if you want to make a golden master image, which I'll discuss in just a moment. All right. So we'll copy this base image over to volume one, and Rackspace goes ahead and sets you up with a, a VM location folder for there. So we'll go ahead and copy uh, by just simply pasting over into that location, and we'll move that, that, that kind of base image uh, from the uh, VM folder over to uh, the cluster storage. All right, so with that copy completed, we've got that base Rackspace image, and we'll go ahead and rename this VHDX so we can keep track of what we're doing, and we'll just call this uh, base 2016 to kind of keep track of what, what's going on. So with this VHDX now copied over to my cluster share volume, it's time to make a VM. So we'll fire up the virtualization manager. And remember, um, it gets kind of confusing between the failover and the virtualization manager, but your virtualization manager is managing those local VMs, and the failover cluster will then be engaged to manage those highly available VMs. And since we're going to build this as a, as a non-HA uh, to begin with, uh, we'll start with the virtualization manager. So we'll just right-click and go new virtual machine, and this will be our base 2016 VM. We're going to make sure that we throw this onto the cluster share volume so that we can make this an HA VM. So that's going to be in C, cluster storage, inside of our volume. 
and in VMs. We'll go ahead and click Next. We'll make this a Gen 2, so this is going to be 2016. We'll give it 4 gigs of RAM. Go ahead and connect it to our virtual switch. And instead of creating a new virtual hard disk, we've already copied one, so we're going to use an existing one. We'll go ahead and browse to that now. If I wanted to build a new VHDX, I could also do it through this menu as well. Yes, you absolutely could. So there is my base 2016 VHDX that I'm going to attach to this new VM I'm making. Go ahead and click Next. Review our settings and click Finish. All right, so with that complete, this VM is now ready to be uh, connected to. You can go ahead and adjust your uh, vCPUs if you wish to at this time, because by default it starts out with one if you are building via the GUI, another reason to use PowerShell. PowerShell's great. And we'll go ahead and change this to four uh, virtual CPUs. And we'll go ahead and start this machine up. And again, this will be just the base generic uh, Rackspace 2016 image with all the updates and goodness and um, integration services and all that stuff already pre-configured for you. All right, so with that VM started up, what you would do is log into it with the default credentials, and you would start the process of making this VM uh, your, your base image. So adding your custom applications, getting the settings configured exactly the way you want. And when you're done with it and satisfied with it, you can go ahead and sysprep this, shut it down, and then you can start using this as your base template image. And you can copy this one, not the Rackspace image, which is just the default one that you start with, but you can copy this base image now and make as many VMs as you would like and just attach those disks and, and spit out as many VMs and self-provision uh, to your heart's content. So if you don't, or if you're having some difficulties with a sysprep limitation, what you can do to get around that if you're going to be making a lot of changes to your custom image is you can go ahead and shut it down before sysprepping and then copy that VHDX and then sysprep that one, leaving the original VHDX to be your kind of parent image to update as you move forward. So there's a lot of different self-provisioning options here, and it's very easy to use by shuffling those VHDXs around uh, inside through the management VM. Any questions on that, Corey? No, it seems pretty uh, straightforward. Now, I did have a question about clustering, and how would I make this a highly available VM? Sure, so now we've got that VM built and it's running on our local uh, hypervisor, what we can do is engage the failover cluster manager, and the failover cluster manager, just like other roles that you've been typically using inside of a failover cluster scenario, you can add a VM as a clustered role. So we'll go ahead and right click on roles in our cluster, configure a role, and we'll go ahead and find the actual VM role, which is located down here at the bottom. So we'll click on virtual machine. This will scan all of our hypervisors and find all VMs that are not uh, currently HA. So we'll go ahead and select that base 2016 VM, click next. And if all the prerequisites are met, which are that it has the ability to be on the CSV and so on and so forth, uh, that'll go ahead and add that as a HA role. And now this has the ability to live migrate around inside of our cluster environment. You now have an HA VM. And remember that you don't have to engage the management VM if you don't want to, you still have PowerShell. And um, if you don't want to deal with any of this, in fact, that's what our support team here at Rackspace is for. Just call Corey up and him or one of the support engineers will be happy to take care of this VM provisioning process for you. So one of the strong points of the Microsoft Private Cloud here at Rackspace is that the flexibility that you have to spin up VMs at your leisure and do it in a manner that you're comfortable with. Yeah, so. there's a lot of flexibility and options. If you want to use PowerShell again, feel free. If you want to use the management VM, it's there for your use. As always, any questions or concerns, you can always reach out to the Microsoft Private Cloud team here at Rackspace, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you do have going forward. Thank you again, Jake, for being on with us. Thank you, Corey.